Today is an occasion when I would like to share with you, and very briefly, three thoughts. The first is the new role of the judiciary. The second would be the role of the bar. And the third would be the challenges facing the Indian judiciary. I always believed that dispensation of justice and mor morality traveled together. Whether it's a criminal court punishing somebody for a crime committed or a civil court dealing with property dispute, it is ultimately the morals, the principles of morality that are upheld which are entwined with the law. As you go higher to the constitutional courts, the situation and the picture becomes very complex. How a state should treat its citizens, whether the state is discriminating, whether the state is being unfair, whether a particular legislation is invalid, these all have to be tested on touchstone of moral principles. Now here is the danger. As judges, we do not permit our individual notions to come and affect our judgment or our decision-making process. Therefore, what has been evolved are principles of constitutional morality, which is a better and a safer and a more realistic test. As judges, we never do something that we have to justify. The very thought of a judge justifying a decision is wrong. We do what is right. And what we think is right, guided by principles of constitutional morality. So far as the members of the bar are concerned, much has been said and much will be said. The members of the bar have more a role to play in shaping up and in making the system dynamic than what has ever been taught. As the Chief Justice of a High Court for about a year and a half, and as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, I have perceived and felt this. And this is not necessarily the role of the bar in the courtroom. It's beyond the courtroom. Evolving new ideas of judicial management, evolving new practices of court management, of case management, can only happen if the bar is realistic. I take this opportunity to appeal to the members of the bar to kindly reflect and see that they cooperate so that the system can thrive. So far as judges are concerned, chief justices are concerned, I may tell the members of the bar they are a part and parcel of the system that you represent. Each judge on the bench has had a longer tenure in the bar than he would have on the bench. So far as the Indian judicial system and the challenges are concerned, I would very briefly touch upon a topic which has been often repeated, pendency. The figures are alarming, three crores. But let me tell you the picture from the other side. Out of these three crores, 81, 81 lakh cases are just about one year old. You know, when you file a case, by the time it gets ready, it takes a little time. Therefore, 81 lakh cases which are less than one year old really cannot be said to be, to be pending. 50 lakh cases out of these three crores are petty cases. 
petty cases, something like motor vehicle breach, breach of the Motor Vehicles Act, Weights and Measures Act, small violations of the excise law, which will call for imposition of a very token fine. These are cases which can go like this. I appeal to the Chief Justices of Andhra Pradesh High Court and Telangana High Court and all other high courts of the country to give it a thought as to how we can best deal with these 50 lakh cases. What is worrisome and troubling is a figure of about 25 lakh cases which are 10 years old. 10 years old is not a good sign. I think some serious reflection on this is necessary. There is no way to deal with this except an utmost degree of commitment, devotion, to see that these 25 lakh cases, which are the black spot of the judiciary, are wiped out as quickly as possible. There is one more uh, fact that I thought I should mention. You know, we have not had judges for a very long time. There is a huge vacancy. Recently, the Supreme Court on the judicial side has taken up the job of filling up 5,000 vacancies in the district judiciary, along with provisions for courtrooms, residence for judges, etc. And I may tell you, the efforts have not gone without result. The feedback coming from the high courts and the states are very positive, and I am personally very optimistic that these 5,000 vacancies in the cadre of district judges and subordinate judges will be filled up very soon. Very soon meaning maybe 75% of these 5,000 vacancies by the end of 2019. So far as high court judges are concerned, there are 400 vacancies, 392 to be precise. I just got the figures in the morning, just now. Out, out of these four, about 392, 400 vacancies, the high courts of the country are yet to make recommendations for 270 posts. 130 are in the pipeline, out of which 100 are before the Supreme Court Collegium and 14 before the state union government. Let us not blame anybody. 270 recommendations are yet to be made by the high courts. I appeal to the Chief Justice of the High Courts to make these recommendations. 100 are pending before the Supreme Court. We'll clear this in the next two to three weeks. There are only 14 pending with the government. This is perhaps one way of tackling the problem. And it, it, uh, these are the twin factors, pendency and lack of judges which have made the system, the judicial dispensation system, extremely vulnerable. But, as I have indicated, the problem is eminently solvable. Let us take this great occasion to take a solemn pledge that we will move the system forward. At the end of the day, with these thoughts, I dedicate the new building of the Andhra Pradesh High Court to the people of the state of Andhra Pradesh. Thank you and Jai Hind.